I'm back with a new video and today I just want to talk about cold showers again. There is a reason and I know this is going to get a bit repetitive after a while but hopefully if you're still watching you care somewhat about my cold shower experiences. Now I've been taking cold showers pretty much most of the last two or three years. However the last year I've had a bit of a gap where I haven't done it for a few months and then recently since I've started doing these semi-daily videos, obviously I had a break recently, recently I've started doing more cold showers every morning. Now what happens is, and uh, by the way this, this is going to be like a video on how to deal with cold showers because it is quite you know challenging to do but it has long-term benefits. So I mean, as you can see I've just got out of the shower myself, that's why my hair is wet. So it's still fresh in my mind, the feeling of the cold water hitting your back and chest. Now. When you first start cold showers, they're gonna be difficult. You're gonna not really know why you're doing it. You're gonna start thinking, this is really uncomfortable. It's so tempting to just switch the hot water back on or you know, to ease yourself into it gently. Maybe you have it on lukewarm and then cold. Have it for a few seconds and then go back up to warm. Now that is good and that's still better because it's giving, your, it's giving you a contrast which is going to stimulate your blood flow, it's going to give you that contrast between hot and cold which is going to stimulate the blood flow to your internal organs and then back again to your extremities and then vice versa which is going to be good, it's going to make you feel good, it's going to pump blood around your body and it's going to help you with recovery if you're, doing, if you're trying to build muscle um, or it's going to help you also with your immune system and everything like that. That being said, I still think just cold water is better. I think you should do contrast showers every now and then, like maybe once or twice a month, but you should focus mainly, I think, on cold showers every day where you only use cold water. And the reason for that is because it helps strengthen your immune system. It's a hormetic stressor, which means it's a small stress to your body, which over time makes you stronger. It makes you more resilient to things like colds, hay fever, uh, flu, various other you know contagious things. Obviously hay fever is not contagious, the other things I mentioned and over a long period of time it just makes you stronger. Now when I say how to deal with them what happens is what I would suggest to do the best time to start doing cold showers if you if you want it to become a daily habit right which you know you should ideally the best time to start doing them is in summer and for obvious reasons in summer you're going to want to have a cold shower more than if it's freezing and you can see your own breath outside in the garden that is going to be tr tricky you know it's going to be hard Whereas if it's summer, it's hot outside, it's all humid, you, you want to cool down anyway, a cold shower isn't normally welcome. And most people actually have cold showers anyway in summer without even knowing the benefits. So, you know, they might just have a cold shower to cool down because it's so hot. And then afterwards they step outside and they say, wow, you know what, I feel great. You know, I, I feel really good after that cold shower. And they go about their lives and probably forget about the whole experience. And then winter comes along and they're back to the hot showers. I would suggest to have cold showers every day, year long, year round. But what happens is, if you start this in any season other than summer, usually you're going to find it tricky because it's not as easy to go into a cold shower when it's already cold outside. I would advise to start this habit in summer so that you can get yourself used to the experience of cold water before it gets colder in the winter. Obviously this varies depending on where you live, uh, but most of the people watching this are either in the UK, Europe or America. So for those of you, absolutely, you know, start this in summer and then when it gets to winter, what's going to happen is the, the colder it gets outside, the colder, usually the colder your water will get because the pipes will run underground. So the colder the ground is, the colder the water will ultimately be if you're having completely cold showers, meaning turning the cold tap all the way on and not using the hot tap at all. The temperature of that water will largely be determined by the outside ground temperature or the underground temperature. So obviously the colder it is outside, the colder the water is going to be. Up to a point obviously it won't be completely frozen. And if you're watching this in countries which are freezing, you know, really really cold countries, then obviously be a bit more careful and a bit more sensible with this. You don't want to have completely ice cold water. This, is main, this video is mainly aimed at people in America or Europe where if you have cold water showers, it's usually it's going to be roughly the same temperature. It's not going to be freezing. It's going, to be, it's going to be cold, but it's not going to be frozen. So what you want to do is just ease yourself into it by having a cold shower every day in the summer. When it gets towards the winter, it's going to get harder. And the first really cold night is going to be the, the hardest shower to have in the morning the following day because the, the ground will be cold and it will, it will cool down the water a lot. And that difference in temperature will be quite difficult to manage at first. 
So how do you actually deal with it, right? I mean, yeah, I've made a six minute intro to this, but the, re the way you actually deal with this stuff when you actually step into the cold water is try not to move much at all, okay? It's gonna be really, what a lot of people try and do, okay, is they, they'll step into the cold shower, start panting, frantically moving around and like washing themselves just to try and keep moving and, and supposedly to try and keep warm. It doesn't really work like that. You can't warm up like that because you're under a direct stream of cold water. So the faster you move, you're just spreading the cold water around you more and it's gonna get colder. So and another thing that people try and do is they try and tense all their muscles in an attempt to warm themselves up from the inside. It doesn't work. And to be honest, that's not the object. The object is you're trying to cool your body down. Um, because that is the hormetic stressor that will help you to get stronger, to develop your immune system, and to pump the blood around your body and, and help you get that energetic boost. You don't want to warm up, you, you should embrace the cold. And for that reason, when you step into the shower, your goal is not to try and warm up. Your goal, your goal is to get as much of the water on you as possible and let it cool you down. So don't try and move around too much, just stand under the, the shower stream and just try and breathe deeply into your chest and into your stomach. That's all you need to do. And then obviously slowly turn around to ensure your whole body gets cooled down by the water. And all the while remember to breathe deeply. Now, don't breathe too rapidly and deeply that it gets you lightheaded. Because this is actually a really common thing and loads of people are admitted to hospital every year uh, because they try and have cold showers and they find that they need to breathe deeply and rapidly. And obviously if you're not used to doing that, you get lightheaded. I mean, it's you know a common school ground game is to try and breathe in and out as deeply and fast as possible, uh, in with the object of passing out. So it's dangerous. Don't do that. You know, focus on calming yourself down and doing long, slow breaths, not rapid breaths. Okay. Um, but what, we, what you'll find is that when you step underneath the cold water, your body knows how to do it. You'll breathe naturally anyway. You don't really need to force it. You'll just be forced to do it by the cold water. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much what you need to do. Don't focus on running around in the shower, just calm yourself down, slow down, don't move, and embrace the cold water. You're trying to get yourself fairly cold with the water. You're not trying to jump in the shower and then endure it by running or you know running on the spot or tensing your muscles and trying to warm up. That's not what you're trying to do. And if you're doing that, it's counterintuitive because you won't get the benefits as much. So step into the shower, slow down, let the water cool you down, and then step out of the shower. Very simple. So try and stay in there for about two to three minutes and try and do this every day and you really will see a difference. Like I've been doing this for, for months now and it really does make a difference. So go ahead and subscribe guys if you liked this and I'll see you next time. Done.